is a big, powerful softy. In the cushiest of its three suspension modes, the dampers allow deep strokes and the car squats theatrically under acceleration, even shimmying a little at the rear if you catch a bump just right. Our route through Tuscany took in a lot of narrow, snaking roads, on which the car felt a bit caged if still competent. The brakes are firm, and the steering weight and tune are organic if not quite sharp enough for a pounding pace. The transmission paddles have excessively long throws, making manual shifting less than gratifying. Aston does get points for separating the suspension mode control from the throttle slash transmission control, of which there are also three positions. Thus, you can put the suspension in the more tied-down middle setting without being forced into a correspondingly sharper shift and throttle map. Turn both controls up to max attack and the DB11 is still no street brawler. In Sport Plus it becomes about as aggressive as the Earl of Denby upon discovering that the brandy has turned. Gaze at the photos for a minute and admire how Aston rolled the dice on some new ideas while also retaining the basic water smoothed shape of a river stone, the one introduced with the 1994 DB7. The DB11 is long, low, and extravagantly wide, as was its slippery predecessor, the DB9. But it gets a little more technical with lead light blades, a few beveled edges, and the roof strake, a flashy bit of armor that arches over the cockpit and sacrilegiously cleaves the steeply raked C-pillar, an Aston trademark. The strake's mechanical purpose is to frame the aero blades, air ducts hidden in the rear haunches that direct wind through the body, squeezing and twisting it before exhausting it out of vent in the trunklet to reduce drag at speed. It also has an aesthetic mission, it can be ordered anodized in black, or body color, or as polished aluminum, and it demarcates the DB11 from all previous Aston Martins. Another departure from the Aston Coupe's typical flowing beauty is the broken front wheel arch line, which is punctuated by a deeply scalloped air vent where the huge new one-piece aluminum clamshell hood meets the body side. The C4 Corvette-like clamshell, a substantial engineering and stamping achievement, we're told, supplies both closure line cleanliness and pedestrian impact regulatory compliance. Small winglets in the hood ducts that relieve air pressure from inside the front wheel houses direct the stream of air out in a tumbling vortex pattern that mixes with hot engine compartment air from the side vents to further aid aerodynamic efficiency. Beneath it all is the new 5.2 liter twin turbo V12 that replaces the old naturally aspirated 5.9, which still powers the more expensive Vanquish for now. Like the 5.9, the 5.2 comes via Ford's Cologne, Germany plant, but Palmer swears up and down that Aston did the engineering. We had a choice between doing a new V12 or a new V8, so we picked the 12 for the DB11 and are sourcing the 8 for the Vantage from a partner, he said, referring to Mercedes.